This video is a PSA for everyone. Well, almost. At least it's for you if you have any kind of devices with rechargeable batteries like a phone or a tablet or a laptop. You don't want this to happen. You certainly don't want this to happen. And this one? Well, this one could kill you. Let me explain. Hi, I'm Justin from Random Tech Videos and before we get into this video, this video that I'm making right now is more for a broader audience. However, this channel is all about just random tech and PCs. So if you like that, feel free to subscribe. But if you don't, well still please watch this video. This video is about lithium ion battery safety. So that you can know just how common these batteries actually are, here's just a very small list of objects that have them. Laptops, tablets, phones, smartwatches, GPS navigation devices, wireless headphones, Bluetooth earphones, wireless gaming keyboards, power banks, power tools, electric scooters, electric bikes, electric cars, cameras, and much, much more. I'm not going to get into the scientific explanation of how lithium ion batteries work because that's beyond the scope of this video. What I will say though is that there are certain conditions that can happen to these batteries under which conditions the cells in the batteries can degrade and lead to swelling and potentially fire. And not just any ordinary fire, a fire that can't easily be put out, can explode, and can release deadly fumes. And that's what this video is about. These fires can happen, they're not all that common, but it's not exactly uncommon either to hear about a lithium ion battery fire. Here are some things you can do to decrease the chances of your devices with lithium ion batteries starting fires or just swelling. 1. Don't charge your batteries when the battery or the device is hot or if it's like hot outside. For example, don't put your phone on the dashboard of a car using it for GPS and plug it in for charging if it's like 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Charging a battery while hot can increase the chance of swelling and can also increase the chance of premature wear and failure. 2. Never store devices with lithium ion batteries in extreme temperatures. For example, that old laptop that you have that you haven't used for 10 years, don't put it in the attic. 3. This one isn't always possible. But when possible, it's a good idea to not charge a lithium ion battery to its full capacity. For example, some phones and most electric cars and some laptops and other devices let you limit the maximum charge of a battery to like maybe instead of 100% only charging it to 80% or 75%. By doing this, you will eliminate the point of the charge cycle where the most wear occurs, which is between that last 10% of the battery charge, like going from 90% to 100%. When you go from 90% to 100%, that's the worst part for any lithium ion battery, and that's when the most battery degradation occurs. So limiting the maximum charge on average to like 80% or so will greatly increase the lifespan of the battery, and it will also prevent the excessive heat that comes when charging to full so that the battery doesn't swell up as easily and doesn't degrade as quickly. Four, if you need to store a device or a lithium ion battery for an extended period of time, you want to, if possible, charge or discharge it to around 40 to 50% of its full capacity. Because when it's completely charged like this and it's holding all that charge, the cells will degrade a lot quicker than if it's only partially charged. You don't want it completely discharged either because that's bad and can cause cell degradation too. Five, when working on a device with a lithium ion battery, make sure that you never poke the battery with any sharp objects for any reason because that could start a fire or at minimum release very toxic fumes that could cause lung cancer or even be fatal. Okay, so you can do all the precautions in the world to keep your battery safe, but there will just still sometimes be batteries that swell or catch fire due to manufacturing errors and defects. This is usually very rare and can most often be prevented, but once in a while you may come across a battery that is just defective or has a completely defective design like the Galaxy Note 7 fiasco. 
If a battery in a device starts swelling, here's immediately what you need to do. If it's charging, immediately unplug the battery or the device from the charger and immediately stop using the device. If the swelling is just minor, try to discharge the device as much as possible before discontinuing using it because a battery is a lot less likely to start a fire if it's like at 0% as opposed to being nearly full. If you find any lithium ion battery that is swollen, take it to a battery recycling facility or any place where they accept bad lithium ion batteries because you do not want to put this in your normal trash as aside from being harmful for the environment, it can also create fires because like there's often sharp stuff in the trash that can poke the battery and you don't want to start a dumpster fire. So what if you don't know what to look for to know if a battery is swelling? Well, here's a few tips. If like you have any device and the casing on the device starts to bulge for no reason apparently, there's a very good chance that it has been caused by a swollen lithium ion battery. Some batteries won't swell and they'll just stop working, whereas other batteries will start to swell even if they still appear to hold charge. If it starts to swell at all, immediately discontinue use until the battery can either be replaced or until the device or battery can be disposed of. Another thing you can look for like on a laptop is if the touchpad on a laptop stops clicking down properly, that is a good indication that the internal battery might be swollen because the pressure is preventing the laptop's touchpad from clicking, even if there's no visible case bulging yet. On phones and tablets and other similar devices, a weird spot on the middle of the screen or improper touchscreen response can also be indicative of a failing lithium ion battery that is starting to swell. Sometimes when it gets this bad, you just have to get the whole screen or device replaced. Other times removing the pressure will fix the issue when a new battery is installed. One more thing, I sincerely hope and you sincerely hope that this never happens, but if you ever have a lithium ion battery catch fire, here's what you need to know. One, before a lithium ion battery catches fire, it usually will start venting and giving off a weird rancid burning smell. If you smell this coming from any device, immediately unplug the device if it is plugged in and put it at a safe place outside where it can burn out if necessary. This smell is a warning that thermal runaway is occurring and usually happens for up to a few minutes before a full fire breaks out on a device. Two, lithium ion battery fires are self oxidizing. This means that they do not need an external source of oxygen to burn. So even if you put the device underwater, it will still burn underwater. And even if you try to put it out with a fire extinguisher, it'll usually just reignite. Therefore, the general rule for a lithium ion battery fire is often to just put it somewhere safe where it can't catch anything else on fire, just let it burn out. Three, lithium ion battery fires release large amounts of deadly gases. So I mentioned this earlier, but this is so important. It has to be said again. If there's a lithium ion battery fire and you have to get the device out of a building or something, do not breathe while you're carrying the device and immediately run away from it as soon as it's in a safe place because it can explode. Four, lithium ion battery fires can reignite at any time. There are stories of electric car fires reigniting days after essentially being thought to be completely put out. So never trust a lithium ion battery after a fire until you have contacted like local fire authorities and made sure that it is safe. Even like with a laptop, there are multiple cells in the batteries. And so like one cell could fail and then five minutes later, 10 minutes later, or even a few hours later, another cell could fail and suddenly start fire too. And finally, before I end this video, I would like to share a story of my experience with a lithium ion battery fire. I used to work at a tech recycling place where we got hundreds or thousands of old laptops of a specific HP EliteBook model. These laptops had notorious issues where the batteries would prematurely fail and about 75% of the laptops that we got in were swollen, like the case was popping apart and the batteries were just completely bulged and it was just so dangerous. So what we do is one of the steps of recycling and refurbishing was we take the batteries out, the dangerous swollen batteries, to dispose of them properly. But in the meantime, like while I was going through a stack of laptops just putting the batteries over, I would be piling them on the desk 
in front of me and normally no issues all these puffy batteries are just waiting to explode but hadn't actually had any actually explode but one day after a battery had already been taken out of the laptop and was just sitting on the desk for who knows how long like maybe even 15 minutes or something I was like what's this weird smell my coworkers didn't smell it and so I thought okay maybe it's nothing maybe my nose is just having problems I don't know but then a little later was when it happened it was just scary like the battery was sitting on the table and suddenly all this white smoke just started shooting out at me like really just shooting out at me I got out of there so fast and pulled the fire alarm my boss at the time managed to get the battery and put it outside somehow he probably breathed in a lot of lithium fumes so that's not good but the only proof I have of this because I wasn't allowed to have cameras in there or whatever the only proof I have is this one photo right here thankfully it was stopped before it spread to all the other dangerous batteries around that area after that we did have more stringent battery safety measures put in place like immediately putting batteries in a fireproof container but at least I don't have to worry about that because I'm not working there anymore but that was such a scary experience when I worked at that place so that's my story with a lithium-ion battery fire sorry for rambling on about that story but well I hope you found this video informative and helpful if you found this video helpful please consider giving it a thumbs up as it helps my videos in the algorithm and I want more people to see this video for safety reasons this is a kind of video that you need to share with everyone because everyone is affected by this so while this channel is normally about tech I just had to make this video because there isn't enough knowledge about lithium ion battery safety anyway thank you for watching please consider subscribing if you like tech content and if not feel free to not subscribe you don't have to but thanks for watching to the end and until my next video if you're subscribed you'll see it if not goodbye